Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold to Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And I realize that some of you didn't get the opportunity to see our, our message last week. Why? I was censored. I was taken down, or our video was taken down from YouTube. And they left us a strong message saying that if we were to do it again, stronger actions would be taken. So, we only had four views before, before it was actually taken down, and I guess I didn't support their narrative. But if you missed that video, if you, you were one of those who did not get to see the video and you would like to see it, we placed a link at the bottom of this message. And um, it's, our videos are all posted on holdthehope.org. We're also on Rumble. So if you would just click the link below and if you wouldn't mind, if you would press the like button and share it and subscribe, we would appreciate that. Thank you. And in that message, all I was asking is, let us have a choice. Give us a choice. Give everybody a choice. And I listed the reasons why I thought that we should have a choice. And so that's what I want to talk about today being censored. And that's the name of our message, censored. So turn with me, please, to the scripture found in Luke chapter 19, verse 37 through 40. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The scripture says, as he, who? Jesus, as Jesus was drawing near. And I believe he, I believe Jesus is drawing near again. And this time it's for keeps. Jesus said that he was coming back to get us, to get everyone who's waiting for his return. Everyone who is watching. And we would know that his return is near when we see all of these things that are happening today, when we see all that's going on in the world today. He said, look up for your redemption is drawing nigh. And we're not prophesying that a day. We're not prophesying an hour. For no man knows the hour, no man knows the day. We understand that. But he said that when you see all of this happening, begin to happen, you will know that it is near even at the door. And all you have to do is to open up your eyes and look and see and you will know. So let him who has an, who has an ear hear. Let him who has eyes to see, let him see. We've had 2,000 years to proclaim the word we had 2,000 years to proclaim the message. We've had 2,000 years to, to win souls, to make disciples. And this is our last dance per se. This is the 11th hour. The minutes are slowly, or not slowly, they're rushing into to strike 12. The time for Jesus' return is at hand. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back. Make no mistake. And the nearer his return is, the more and more they will try to shut us up, try to hush us up. Just like those Pharisees were trying to get Jesus to hush up his disciples back then, the elite is trying to shut us up now. But if we be quiet, the very stones will cry out. And we do not want stones, I know I don't want stones, to cry out in my place. So for those of you who watch our videos on a regular basis, you would probably remember me talking about a commercial that was being aired in Australia. And I believe um, over Europe as well, but especially in Australia, it said, you will own nothing and you will be happy. That 
is their communistic goal for us, us plebeians. To have nothing, to own nothing, no hopes, no dreams, no nothing. So I want to tell you, though, they say that we will be happy, but I'm telling you, we will not be happy. That is not their goal for us. And the closer Jesus' return gets, the worse it will get. I want you to look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. The devil knows that his time is running out. Therefore, he's doubling, he's tripling, he's even quadrupling his efforts. And I say, stay strong. I say, stay faithful. There's a great reward for us if we only hold on to the end and not give up. I want, I want to read just a little snippet of what is coming to a neighborhood near you. I found this on the um, Center for Disease Control at, on their own website. Hopefully, I won't be reprimanded for quoting facts from the CDC. This is their document. And I quote, This document presents considerations for the perspective of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, for implementing the shielding approach in humanitarian settings as outlined in guidance documents focused on camps, displacement population, and low resource settings. The shielding approach aims to reduce the number of severe COVID-19 cases by limited contact between individuals at high risk of developing severe disease. They're called high risk. And the, the general population, low risk. High risk individuals would be temporarily relocated to safe or green zones established at the household neighborhood, camp, sector, or community level dependent on the context and the setting. They would have minimal contact with family members and other low-risk residents. What are these green zones? What it sounds like to me, it sounds just like those Nazi concentration camps that they developed in Germany. Um, also known as the Nazi death camps. They're starting out with the elderly and the weak. They will separate them, all of those, they will separate them from family members. They will separate them from, from their loved ones. They'll separate them from their friends. And apparently everything that they will need will be there. They'll have no need for outside contact. They'll have no need for contact with, with, with their friends or their family members or their loved ones. They said, you will own nothing and you will be happy or else. DHS has updated their terrorist list issued August the 13th, 2021. Let's see what they consider terrorism. I quote, the Secretary of Homeland Security has issued a new National Terrorism Advisory System Bulletin regarding the current heightened threat environment across the United States. The homeland continues to face a diverse and challenging threat environment leading up to and following the 20th anniversary of the September 11, 2001 attacks as well as religious holidays we assess could serve as a catalyst for acts of targeted violence. These threats include those posed by domestic terrorists, individuals and groups engaged in grievance-based violence, those inspired or motivated by foreign terrorists, and other malign foreign influences. These actors are increasingly exploiting online forums to influence and spread violent extremist narratives and promote violent activity. 
Such threats are also exasperated by impacts of the ongoing global pandemic, including grievances over public health, safety issues, and perceived government restrictions. So, according to the bulletin, the threat of terrorism is currently heightened. And these are the causes of the heightened terrorism measures that they're taking. 9-11 anniversary is a threat. Religious holidays that they assess is a, is a threat. Maybe that includes Christmas and Easter. Christmas is already under attack. Those, number three, those with grievances to the COVID-19 measures, I suppose that would be the um, lockdowns and face masks. So if you disagree with that, you're a potential terrorist. Those with grievances over, over public health safety measures, I would suppose that would, would, would be the COVID-19 vaccines and the green zone. So if you disagree with that, you're also a potential terrorist. Perceived government restrictions. Those who has a problem with anything that the government does, I am assuming, or what government deems necessary. So if, if we disagree with what government deems is necessary, then we are potential terrorists. I'm telling you, it is designed to strike fear into the heart of the populace and to keep us compliant. In other words, we are censored. We no longer live in a world with with free speech unless it's a part of government rhetoric. Here is a truth though, they cannot hush up. This truth will be proclaimed. The time for Jesus' return is drawing near. It is even at the door. There's no time for us to be monkeying around. There's no time for us to sit back and play games. These people are not playing games with us. So we need to open up our eyes and see what is happening. See what is going on. If I could only get one thing across to you today, it would be get your house in order. Get ready to meet Jesus. But this is what he said in Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 through 13. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He said that his reward is with him and he will give to each person according to what he or she has done. So whether it is good or whether it is bad, there will be a reward for you according to what your deeds are. So if you want a good reward, then do good things, do good deeds. If you don't give a care, then continue in your rebellious ways without Jesus. But if you care, get your house in order. Jesus has a good reward for you. It is a war that's going on. A war that they cannot win. Jesus will never be defeated. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the first and he is the last. He's the beginning. He's the end. He is all in all. He's the almighty. He will never ever be defeated. Nothing or no one will be able to stand against him and the power of his word, the power of his name, just by the blast of his breath, he will slay the wicked. So do not be caught on the wrong side. Do not get caught up in those lies that Jesus is not powerful, that Jesus is not almighty. They, they write books about God is not great, but God is great. Look around you. He just spoke it into being. Everything you see, he spoke it into being. Everything that was created was created by him. He is the almighty, and he's coming back for us. Make no mistake. So no matter what the outcome is, Jesus reward, no matter what we go through here on this earth, Jesus reward what he has for us in store far, 
far outweighs any hardship that we have to face, any hardship that we have, have to suffer. Nothing, and I'm telling you, nothing will compare to it. Nothing that you can think about can even begin to compare because nothing can compare with Jesus. Hold the hope is not the only one that has been censored by YouTube. Anyone who does not, not promote their propaganda will be censored. So I wondered, you know, how can they, everybody be censored? How can all of this be hushed up? How can it all be downplayed? How, how, how do we not? So I started looking, and this is what I found. There are supposedly six corporations that own almost all the media. They are number one, Comcast, with a value of $148.2 billion. Disney is next with $88.1 billion value. Time Warner, $60.6 billion. News Corp, $56 billion. National Amusement, $43 billion. And number six, Sony with $34.1 billion. If you notice, they're all liberal leaning companies. So what will they support? What do, do you suppose? You got it. Look what, just, just to back up what I'm saying, look what I found on, on ZeroHedge.com. And I quote, this is a quote, a big tech whistleblower said Google altered its algorithms in order to ensure that negative stories from the established media about former President Donald Trump were what people saw when using the highest trafficked website on the internet, end quote. That is manipulating data, is manipulating the information. It is causing a, an outcome that they want. They steer people to what they want them to do. It's a close relative to censoring. These news media and social media giants either alter, censor, or promote news and promote stories and other articles of information in favor of their desired outcome. CNN was caught several times by Project Virtus, conspiring to alter news or to refocus people's attention away from the real news. Again, that is called misleading the viewers or censoring. At a Bilderberger meeting, David Rockefeller was quoted as saying, We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. It is very clear that the mainstream news cannot be trusted to tell us the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We, it's impossible for us to believe that they are looking out for our best interests. It is not news that they're reporting, but a big pile of shaving cream that you don't want to step in because of the stench. They have been making plans for decades, plans against us, plans against the public. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus has plans of his own. Look with me at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So no matter how much plans that they make, no matter how much that they plan against us, how, how much plans they have for the world, Jesus has plans as well. And it is his plans that will ultimately stand in the end. Look at what is happening in Af Afghanistan. 
There are videos of thousands of people trying to escape Afghanistan because of the well-armed Taliban. And how did they get so well-armed, do you ask? Well, we just pulled out of there in a rush and just left all of our weapons as a gift. Here you go, Taliban. Mothers are supposedly throwing their babies over the fence in hopes that they can escape to freedom. At least that's the report that I've heard. There's a video from a plane of a body just flapping in the wind. The body has been identified as 19-year-old national team player, a soccer player. There are reports that Taliban is going door to door, taking unmarried females from 12 to 45. And some say that they're, they're taking them as sex slaves. And yes, you heard that right. The report says as young as 12 years old and used as sex slaves. Where are the allies of these people? Afghanis who serve the U.S. government as interpreters are left behind to face the consequences. We've broken our promises to them. We've broken our trust to them. Christian missionaries are preparing to meet their Savior because of the death threat that has been pronounced for Christians. But I guess they'll say what Paul said. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. For I know whom I have believed, and I'm convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Or as the King James Version says, I know whom I believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. God remembers, God remembers all you've done, and he will not let it pass without um, giving you a reward. You will be rewarded. He who loses his life for the sake of the gospel and for Jesus' sake will find it. Make no mistake. We do nothing in vain for Jesus. He remembers. Because we know in whom we have believed. We know where we are going. We're all working towards that. One day Jesus is coming back. He's going to split that eastern sky, riding on a white stallion with a two-edged sword protruding out of his mouth with which he will smite those rebellious nations. He will set up his throne in, in Jerusalem, in the temple, and rule the nations with an iron rod for a thousand years. Just think about it. The peace, justice for everyone. No one to make us afraid. No one to persecute us. No one to force us to do things that are unhealthy for us. Jesus will rule. A time to praise. A time to glorify God. A time to worship. Everybody worshiping the Almighty When asked about the hundreds of people packed into a C-17 and the Afghanis who were seen falling from the planes, the president interrupted the, the interviewer mid-speech, cut him off by saying, that was four days ago, five days ago. What does that have to do with the question? The president ended up admitting that all the chaos they are experiencing over there was always priced into the decision. In other words, they knew it was going to happen, but it was collateral damage. And, and it just makes me wonder, does nobody find that even a little bit disturbing? No mainstream news? No mainstream social media? None? Nobody? Nothing? I find it hard to believe that we have lost our sensitivity. We do no longer value 
people. We no longer feel for people. We no longer feel for their families. We no longer feel for their lives. People lose their lives, and it is meaningless. Are people only collateral damage? Have we lost our value for lives? Have we lost our value for souls? Well, I'm here to tell you that man might have lost his love, might have lost value for people, may have lost their love for souls or value of souls, but God himself, he has not lost his love for us or his value for us. In Jeremiah 31, uh, verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. God has loved us with an unbelievable love, a never-ending love, a love that will last throughout eternity. He has loved us so much that Jesus was willing to take a horrific beating and endure it and even endure death on the cross, death by, by crucifixion, that we might have the opportunity to live with him in eternity. We are very valuable by him. We are loved by him. Make no mistake. These are only the signs of the time. He is coming back to get us. He has not forgotten about us. He has not lost his love for us. He is coming back for us. On censoring COVID-19, one Fox reporter said that viewers are being deceived by a carefully crafted narrative. A Facebook group called COVID-19 Vaccination Adverse Effects and Reactions Feedback Australia. That was the name of their Facebook group. They had about 63.8 thousand members. And they would go on and they would share their stories share how, what, what happened to them after taking the vaccine. That, 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 that page was taken down overnight for no apparent reason. They were censored. Victims of the vaccine are not allowed to share their experiences. Another one claimed that TikTok has removed her sound so that no one can hear her story. Doctors and healthcare workers claim that they are disciplined if they speak out about any of the adverse effects of the treatments, no matter what the evidence shows. They cannot speak out without consequences. That, my friends, is censoring. That is dangerous censoring. So in closing, I want to say we are are living in what could be considered frightening times, terrifying times. Our voice is being censored by the elites. It is looking more and more like communism. And not only to me, though, but to the whole, for a whole lot of other people who are finally waking up to the realization that something is wrong. Something is terribly wrong. But Jesus said, fear not, for I am with you even until the end of time. Look, people are no longer valued. Children are no longer valued. Babies are no longer valued. Babies are killed. They're murdered in their own mother's womb. And that is, is blessed by the government. It's time to speak up or you will be shut up forever. The bottom line is this. Jesus is coming back. The end of the end is near. When you see all of these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. For these things are only the beginning of birth pains. Jesus said he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will always, 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 always be with us. Paul said that these things that we endure here on the earth are only momentary afflictions. 
when compared to eternity. Nothing that we can suffer down here, nothing that we can endure down here can compare to what Jesus has in store for us. We ought to be celebrating our God is coming back for us. We just need to get our loved ones in. Jesus is coming back. That is truth. He has placed eternity in our hearts and he wants us to be with him in eternity. He wants to share his eternity with us. So do you know him today? Do you know who Jesus is? If he was to come back today, will he know who you are? Will he come back for you? If you said no to any of those questions, you can be assured of eternal life. All you got to do is to ask. He said, whomever asks, will receive. If you ask, you will receive. So ask today. Join me in this prayer and ask. Our Father, forgive us. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my iniquity. I've strayed, but you paid the price. Salvation is yours to give. And I receive. For you said, if I ask, I would receive. And I'm asking for your forgiveness. I'm asking for your salvation. I'm asking for eternal life. And I receive it today. That free gift of salvation, I receive it. And I thank you for it. Now, Lord, help me to live for you. Rebuke that spirit of fear that I might not fear, but that I might be bold and confident. That I might proclaim your name. That I might win souls. That I might love people. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And as usual, I just want to encourage you to get a Bible and to read the Bible every single day. To highlight those promises. To memorize those promises. Commit them to memory. Jesus will not forget his promises. He will not renege on his promise. He will fulfill every promise he makes to you. Next thing I want you to do is to Find yourself a Bible-believing church who still believes in holiness, who still believes in righteousness, who believes that Jesus is coming back and we have to be prepared to meet him. Don't join one of those progressive churches that's still in their sin. Cling to righteousness. Cling to holiness. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. So join that church be discipled in that church. And when Jesus comes back, like I said, he'll take you to be with him. And that is the ultimate goal. That's what we're all striving for, to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, the links are at the bottom. We are found on holdthehope.org. My name is Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.